Let's get into this horror show. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind, everyone, I watched <clears throat> Dynamite and then turned this show on. Oh, boy. Yeah. And Dynamite wasn't that great. It's not especially... P- but but compared to this... Way better than this show. <laughs> Golly. WCW Saturday night, October 30th, 1993. Let's just get this out of the way first. Thumbs down. A thumbs down for this show. Fair. Hey, go over the card. Tonight, it's Ric Flair versus Sid. Sid Vicious, I should clarify. Sid Vicious in this promotion. Sid Vicious, the man who claims to rule the world. And as they call him this, they show a shot of Sid standing in the ring with his arms over his head. And they use 1993-level video editing software, which now you can, there's better stuff on your iPhone, but a giant globe drops from the sky into Sid's hands because he rules the world. Right. I laughed. This match here, Ric Flair versus Sid, a battle for ultimate wrestling manhood. Hmm. That's how they described it. Sid Vicious versus Ric Flair. Okay, I'm not going to tell you this is like the best Flair match I ever saw. Oh my god, you Good. liked it? That was alright. It was better than his Rick Rude match. Uh, well, That's I That's what I was blown away with. I, Sid had I a better guess. match with Flair than Rick Rude. The problem is Ric Flair is a babyface, and it's funny to say this because his match with Vader is a classic. An all-timer, yes. And he is a babyface in that match. But like, f- here's the thing with Flair. If Flair's a heel, he could carry like a dead body, okay? Mm-hmm. The greatest, alright? As a babyface... He can do it, but, like, it's got to be the right guy. And for whatever reason, the right guy, I can't figure out why the right guy wasn't Rick Rude. I mean, Yoshi Kwan had a better match with Ric Flair than Rick Rude did. Sid had a better match with Ric Flair than Rick Rude did. Eh, kind of. It was, eh. I was bored. I was bored watching it. It was just like, it was I had very low expectations that exceeded them. It wasn't bad. I had high expectations for the Rude match, and it fell short, so maybe that's why. And the other thing is the finish was fucking horrible. Like, the winner of this... It's getting Vader, and it's on a TV match, so that's going to be used to set up the pay-per-view. But, I mean, a DQ? Well, it's a DQ. This is where, this is a shit finish, but it was the right time to do this shit finish. Because this wasn't the title match. It wasn't even, well, it was the top contenders match, but they've been teasing. Sid is pissed off at uh, at Colonel Parker for flirting with Steve Austin. They're officially having a love triangle here. And he warns Parker, don't screw up anymore. So when Flair hooks the figure four and Parker panics and he attacks, Sid reverses the hold, but Parker is so dumb, he still attacks Flair for the DQ. Mm -hmm. This gives Sid cause to snap and go psycho and murder Colonel Parker and destroy him. And now he's a good guy. Well, we think because he got really mad and he grabbed him by the neck. And right when he starts lifting him, they went off the air. Yeah. It was mid chokeslam, wasn't it? That was it? classic. Yes. I mean, that's fine and all, but at the end of the day, it's like Ric Flair just lost to Rick Rude, and we are trying to set up a match for Starcade here, although that may not have been the plan at this exact that's moment. That's what I'm thinking. But at the end of the day, like, whoever was winning this match needed to win the match. And a DQ, I mean, yes, maybe. Actually, I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be Sid Invader, and then whatever happened, happened. But I mean, if it's going to be Sid Invader, then why do you lose via DQ in this match? To 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 do the babyface turn, he loses. He's not beaten. In fact, he was he had out wrestled Flair. He reversed the hold. He got screwed by an incompetent manager who he immediately turfed. You do the title match, the clash, and either guy can win. And then Sid wins the belt at Starcade. Yeah, right. This whatever. is all a fine plan. It didn't work out that way. I'm just sick of all this shit. There was a lot of shit. Too much the shit match, for me. The match was nothing to note. But one thing worth noting is, Ric Flair hit his top rope chop. Three different times yes. in this match. Yes. Yeah. Once to the floor, actually. Oh, God, that looks... Uh, this guy is remarkably durable. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, he was no spring chicken here, and he flies off the top rope and does that big chop to the floor and crash and burned, but he did it. So there you go. I have listened to this noise like 300 times in a row, dying laughing, and I may go do that after the show is over. Because this noise that Seth Rollins played sounded exactly like the mummy's voice that they recreated on National Geographic. Scientists were able to mimic Nessie Amun's voice by recreating his mouth and vocal cords with a 3D printer. It allowed them to produce a single sound. (laughs) 
<laughs> what? <laughs> it allowed them to produce a single sound. Oh! <laughs> I don't know if I could do it one more time. <laughs> it allowed them to produce a single sound. Oh! <laughs> the top comment on YouTube, I love when she says, ah! <laughs> if you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.